What's up guys, Frankie here. This is the Money Resolution, the course, part four. And the truth is this video is a little bit late and amidst everything going on right now, I think that's pretty understandable. So instead of putting out this video on the first like I intended to, I started doing content that felt just more relevant with what's going on. On that note, I'm actually gonna change the structure for this video. So instead of talking about all sorts of different tips for how to save money, make money, get out of debt and invest, these are all going to be tips around investing. So for April, the theme this month is investing tips. I wrote the notes and script for this video a couple of weeks ago and the reality is a couple weeks later, despite all the chaos in the market and everything else, all the tips are just as relevant now, if not more relevant now, than they were a month ago, a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. All of the investing tips on this list today are evergreen. And the reason I'm talking a little bit quiet is because I just gotta film when I can, where I can, because this week I actually made one of the best investments any home or family could make, which is adding a family member a little puppy. He's half border collie, half golden retriever, and fully asleep for once. His name is Leo and he's adorable when he wants to be and a little terror when he wants to be. And no, I'm not getting a ton of sleep, thanks for asking. Now by clicking on this video, you probably already know that knowledge is power. And this isn't just my advice. This is the advice I have read over and over again from the masters. Now, who are these so-called masters? Mainly Warren Buffett, JL Collins, and Dave Ramsey. And they don't agree 100% but they do agree with these general strategies for most everyone. It is so important that we get the basics of investing down now more than ever. So some of you are probably researching this topic, you're seeing a lot of headlines in the news, and let's start there. Avoid the headlines in the news. Everything is sensationalizing what's going on, and the truth of the matter is, these five tips today are gonna help you stay the course, stick to the basics, and ultimately succeed on the other side of this. So I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about the craziness that the market has been the last few weeks, but I will give you just three sort of quick facts here. The first is that as of Friday, April 3rd, both the S&P 500 and the Dow drop roughly 35% in a month's time, wiping out more than a year of gains. The current bull market, which of course is definitely over now, is, or rather was, the longest in history at roughly 11 years. And a lot of people anticipated that bull market turning into a bear market this year, but not really this soon or for this particular reason or this dramatically. And the last fact here is you might have heard of this so-called circuit breaker that had been pulled three times, I think in just a matter of a couple days. So the stock market trading actually paused for 15 minutes because of the craziness happening, just so everyone could sort of cool off, take a deep breath. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now before we jump into the tips, which is just take a deep breath. <laughs> this too shall pass and soon that dog will wake up. Subscribe if you appreciate this content and you wanna see more. Like the video if you, of course, like the video by the end of it. And I do recommend you stick around until the end of it because I am also going to cover one hack and one media recommendation. I still need to get better at shortening these intros. Anyway, here are those five tips about investing in any market, but especially a volatile one like we're in now. And the first tip is to know your risk tolerance. Sure, you've heard this before, but how do you actually figure it out? Well, let's just keep it simple and talk about stocks versus bonds. Now we talk about your portfolio allocation. The allocation of your portfolio or your investments is the percentage of stocks you have versus the percentage of bonds. So the more weighted into stocks you are, the more risky, generally speaking, your portfolio is. So if you're 90% stocks and 10% bonds, you have a pretty aggressive and risky portfolio. If you were the opposite, 90% bonds and 10% stocks, you're probably feeling the pain of this volatile market right now a little bit less. So when should you be risky? There's no way to predict the market. The reality is it has to do a lot with your age. So the younger you are, the more aggressive you can be on the stock side. I am currently roughly 90% stocks, 10% bonds. And as you get older and closer to retirement, that allocation should start to balance out and eventually flip the other direction. So a couple of years before retirement, your ideal allocation is gonna be 90% bonds, 
10% stocks. And this is why the target date retirement funds are so popular and simple within your 401k because you don't have to do anything. It's totally passive and hands off. It starts aggressive as you're further away from that date and it gets more conservative automatically as you get closer to that retirement date outlined in the name of that portfolio. So if you totally don't wanna think about this stuff at all, you just wanna invest in one of these target date funds, shoot for roughly the date that you plan to retire. Hands off and automation is gonna be a common theme that comes up throughout all five of these tips. And study after study shows that those that invest in individual stocks do not tend to beat the market, almost never. It's true that I think MIT scholars and masters could not beat random picks from monkeys or whatever. I really should have researched this before talking about it. So don't pick individual stocks pick instead an entire basket for me that is the S&P 500 it could also be the total stock market VTI VOO VTSAX these are a few that I'm invested in just off the top of my head and for me that meant going into my 401k and instead of having everything distributed you know 3% into each of these different options that they offered I put 70% or so into the S&P 500 one that was available and the other 20 or 30% or so into one of those target retirement date funds I think I said that wrong. He's still asleep, we're good. Let's keep going. Okay, number two is to invest for the long term. You've probably heard this before, but the saying goes, it's time in the market, not timing the market. Nobody knows what's going to happen to the market day to day, nobody. And because of this, I don't even keep up with the day-to-day -day headlines because it's up, it's down, it's a roller coaster and you gotta ride the ride, but stay on the ride, that's the key here. Long-term investing accounts for both a bull, which is good, and bear, which is bad, markets. So if you're invested for the long term, you don't have anything to worry about. Just ride the wave, but ultimately that wave is going to be positive. My backwards. <laughs> and if you look at just a couple of years, and I'll put a visual of that on screen now, it looks kind of not so great right now. But if we zoom out, let's go 10 years now. Okay, it looks a little bit better. You can always see up, down, up, down, up, down, but generally it's up. Let's zoom even further to 50 years, still up. You get the idea everything is up in the long term. So don't worry about the bumps, ride them out. Unless you've got just hours upon hours to study and master this stuff and I'm guessing you don't. Plus, if you're invested for the short term and you sell, selling will ensure taxes right now. So you have short term capital gains taxes if it's an asset that you've had for less than one year and long term capital gain taxes which are a little bit less if it's over one year but either way you're triggering taxes because you've made money the government wants a piece of that. Plus if this is retirement money and there are rules around touching that money you are also going to trigger off fees if you touch it before 59 and a half. And I know right now they're loosening some of these restrictions but I would just say it's better to not get into the habit of touching this money because if you pull it out now that compound interest the growth on the growth on the growth on the growth over time you're just removing that opportunity completely so if you're in a pinch and it's an emergency right now tap on anything else but try not to if you can avoid it at all costs tap into your retirement funds time in the market so long term horizon stay in the market. Tip number three is to dollar cost into the market. And by the way, if you have a 401k and you have money going towards that automatically out of your paycheck, you're already dollar cost averaging. And now would be the worst time to stop doing that. The stocks and indexes that you're buying now, you're getting more for the dollar than you would have a month or two months ago at the time of publishing this anyway. This is a plan that you have that you can stick with and keep it really simple. I consider myself a financial minimalist and being a minimalist isn't living without money. This is all about keeping things simple. So again, automation, dollar cost average into the market. In the long term, again, this will smooth out that volatility. Some online brokerage firms will let investors actually set up automated investments, and if you can do that, I highly recommend you do so. So for me, that's $500 every single month into M1 Finance. Buy those shares on a consistent basis over a long period of time. Tip number four is to not let panic or emotions affect your investment decisions. I've already alluded to this a couple of different times, but we cannot let our emotions take over when we're making decisions. 
If you know your risk tolerance and you plan to invest for the long term and dollar cost average into the market, we can take emotion out of it completely. You're already covered on this one. All of these experts will tell you consistently and they still are telling you this right now. Trust me, I'm listening to all the podcasts and watching all the videos. They are saying, stay the course. Do not get emotional and make decisions you're gonna regret later. Especially if you're not a seasoned veteran, if you don't feel like an expert. And even experts say, stay the course. So I hope I've drilled this idea home. Don't get emotional and make decisions without understanding the consequences, the taxes, the fees, losing out on compound interest. We don't wanna do that, especially now. And it goes both ways. So we also get irrational when the market is really high and we think we need to sell immediately or we should have got in, we regret it, so we might as well jump in now. None of that matters. Stay consistent, stay emotionless. Take that deep breath that we did earlier and clear your head. I was a little bit tempted to borrow from my own emergency fund so that I could max out my Roth right away when everything is low. But that would be, once again, reacting with emotion. So I decided to stay the course, automate, continue to dollar cost average because I can't predict. This thing could get a lot worse or it could get a lot better quickly. We just don't know. We don't know enough about this virus or when we're gonna get past it or how the economy is gonna recover post stimulus check. We just don't know. By the way, nobody knows. Just yesterday I was watching a video, Dave Ramsey was talking about some idiot that cut him off on the highway, merging into his lane, and so he swerved and almost went two lanes over, almost hit another car, almost caused a pile up, almost went into a barricade. So the moral of the story here is that he overcorrected. We don't want to overcorrect, we might cause a worse accident or bad investment decision. Leo stirs, but he's going back down. Tip number five, and this one probably is the most important tip here on this list considering the environment that we're in now. This is that you only lose or gain money when you sell. So if your portfolio is down right now and you sell, you're locking in those losses. Do not sell in a down market. So if you didn't react at the time of this recording a month ago or whenever this started to drop, it's already too late. There's no sense. I hear people say this all the time and I wanna jump in and correct them. They say, oh, I lost you know, so much money or so much percent of my portfolio today or I gained so much, the market's up, my portfolio looks so good and I'm like, that's great, but unless you sell, you didn't necessarily gain or lose anything. The value of your portfolio may have gone up, but not the cash in your personal hands. So when people say buy the dip, let's just keep it simple and ignore that. That's nonsense. You should say dollar cost average. It just doesn't sound as cool. And just briefly, I wanna to touch on this concept of anchoring that I learned about recently, which is that we really anchor to the price that we pay for these stocks or bonds or index funds. So we know what we pay, let's say it's $60 for one share. As soon as it drops below that, we panic and we get emotional. So by just riding the wave long-term, we remove emotion completely and that is key. Because again, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, I promise you, that that S&P 500 is going to be much, much higher than it is today. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and summarize. These are my five tips for April, and this is all about investing. The first is to know your risk tolerance. The younger you are, the more risk you can take on. The second is to look at all investing as long-term investing, especially with your retirement accounts. The third is to automate your investing by using a consistent dollar cost averaging strategy. Put a little bit in consistently. Fourth is to not make decisions when you're feeling emotional. And five is you do not make or lose money day to day. You only make or lose money when you sell. So do not sell when your portfolio is down. Warren Buffett said years ago, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. In other words, avoid herd mentality and buy low. I talk about buying low because a lot of us are in a situation where we'll be receiving that stimulus check of up to $1,200 here in the next couple of weeks, they say. One thing you might be tempted to do is invest a part or all of that stimulus check into the market because the market is a little bit low right now. If you're considering doing this and you're in a good financial situation both now and in the future because your job is stable, I do think that this is a great idea. If you don't already have a Roth IRA, I would highly recommend you open one with M1 Finance and put some or all of this money 
towards your Roth IRA. And if you do wanna know what is a Roth IRA, what are the rules, why should I open one with M1 Finance, how do I do it, I'll link above and in the description below a video I put out recently all on this topic. Puppy woke up, so it's the next day. Finally, your media recommendation, and I actually have two for you because the first one's super short. It's a video on YouTube, and it's called Carl Nassib, Financial Advisor, Episode 1 Clip, Hard Knocks HBO. That's a lot, I'll link it below. Basically, it's a professional football player explaining how compound interest works to other professional football players. He does a pretty good job. There's lots of profanity, but it was really fun to see some of the other football players' eyes open talking about compound interest. The other one is a documentary on HBO. This is also $2.99, I think, to rent on iTunes and other places if you don't have HBO, and it's called Becoming Warren Buffett. Obviously, it's about Warren Buffett, and I think it's a really cool insight into just sort of who he is, his life, his philosophies, his breakfast habit at McDonald's. Anyway, I really enjoyed this one, and I referenced him in this video. I think you'll enjoy it as well. Honestly, guys, I considered just scrapping this video and not making it because this is a really scary topic, this is a really scary time, but this felt like information I wanted to put out there the more and more I saw headlines that were really upsetting me. So I really, really hope you got some value out of these tips. Let me know if there's one that stood out above the others. It really means a lot to me to get some feedback sort of on this video and the series in general. And if you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to remember these three words. Stay the course. And also, Two more words, just breathe. This too shall pass. I am not a certified financial planner. I am just a self-proclaimed personal finance nerd who puts out videos here on YouTube once a week. So definitely do your research. And I really hope that this helps somebody out there sleep better at night because I know that personal finances are extra stressful right now. But what's number one is your health, your happiness, and also finding just some way to try to help others. And this is my way of doing so. Thanks, you guys. As always, my name is Frankie. This is the Money Resolution, the course part four. Like like this video if you got some value out of it. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of this. Right now, this is like my therapy talking to the camera and you guys, so I especially appreciate you tuning in. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing right now, so thank you. And as always, guys, I will talk to you on the next one. Thanks. Oh, and I said there's gonna be puppy stuff at the end of this video, so here is a quick minute or two of footage I've collected in the first week of having little Leo in the house. Nope, nope. Oh, nope, nope. What do you got? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh. We lost him. Hope you enjoyed that. By the way, here is that video I referenced earlier about M1 Finance, how to open one in your Roth IRA. According to YouTube, you're also gonna really enjoy this video. Okay, bye.